Hey, it's Syndicated Radio Talk Show host, author, singer, Al Cole, welcoming you to another edition of People of Distinction, the talk that gives an in-depth view of some of the most dynamic, intelligent, and successful people on the planet. I come from CBS Radio, my shows are nationally syndicated, and I've helped pave the way to treating women, guys too, with the dignity that they deserve. And that's what we talk about on People of Distinction. Ginny Graham Scott is going to add to that today. Yeah, all you people out there, you're going to love this lady. Her name is Ginny Graham Scott, a wonderful, even poetic name there. And uh, she's the CEO of Changemakers Publishing and Writing. And you're going to love what she says. Now, if you have anything to do with publishing and writing right from the get-go, but it doesn't end there, I want you to listen in because we can can really help you out with this interview. People who are publicists and publishers and people who are interested in writing, listen. And also, if you are a writer looking for some sort of publishing firm maybe to represent you, she can help you out with that. She's also great at connecting you with film. There are a lot of people these days who are creating their own films, and we know that throughout the 2000s, it's become big, and not just in Hollywood and New York, but also places like Atlanta and all around the world, and there are a lot of experimental filmmakers. You don't have to have a whole film out there, but maybe uh, even a screenplay. Whoa, and Ginny can help you out that way, too, with uh, getting it out to some of the right people that will connect you to success. Underscore that word. We love that on people of distinction. But not only that, you know, she's also interested in money. Yeah, money making, as we all are. She connects people to venture capitalists as well. Whoa, now that's really something. Everybody wants an angel investor. We know that. These days are, hey, you know, not making enough money. I want a little bit of help here. I got some great ideas. I got a great brain in my head not so much on the capital side so who's gonna who's gonna knock on my door or whose door can i knock on to get some venture capital well look no longer Ginny's gonna help you out that way too with a lot of great ideas and actual actualization to those ideas as well she's wonderful about that so everybody listen in and i think everything that she does is going to include my audience right now you're all interested in books and writing and all of that stuff and film and connecting people to people and venture capital and money and all of that and she's going to be talking it up on people of distinction and uh, if you want to visit her website uh, visit her website too you can get even more of a clue in as you're listening to uh Jenny's fantastic words here. Go to changemakerspublishingandwriting.com. Again, that's changemakerspublishingandwriting.com. Welcome, Jenny, to People of Distinction with Al Cole. It's a pleasure to have you on today. How are you doing, Jenny? Yeah, glad to be here. Thank you. We're going to talk about it here. You're an exciting lady. I met you recently. Oh, thank you. And I also appreciate your positivity approach because I've always believed in that throughout my life. That's right. And that's why I name my show People of Distinction, because we are all people of distinction. Under the right situations, uh, we all have something to offer to the benefit of our human family. Let's get into it, Jenny. What do you got to offer here? We already know. I gave a little bit of a rundown, but now you can say it in your own words about changemakers, publishing, and writing. Okay, well, I mean, some of the things that I do, I've been um, ghostwriting for people for um, over a decade, and I've published about 200 books at this point of my own. So I help people write books, um, get their books published, um, if they're self-publishing, or I help connect them with publishers and agents if they're looking for a traditional publishing deal. Um, I've had a a website for 17 years, um, a company called Publishers Agents Films, uh, which uh, connects people uh, using their email, and we send out emails for people to um, uh, editors and agents. And then also, if they're if they're ready to uh, turn their book into a film, um, I can help with uh, writing a screenplay from it, or or doing a um, uh, a log line synopsis, you know, whatever that people need. And then we can connect them to uh, film producers and agents. Um, another thing we do is we do sometimes people want a sizzle reel because that's a good way to help your script stand out. Uh, so many people um, uh, submit films right now. Uh, there's like 5,000 submissions a year, uh, and it's just overwhelming to people. But if you have a sizzle reel, it can help you stand out. If you're doing a, a, a series, 
then a show Bible is what you want to do. This is like a book proposal. So I can help people with all of those things. Isn't that something? Now, you've said a lot in uh, actually a very condensed period of time. I want to break it uh, into different areas here. Of course, you're talking about writers and uh, you're talking about publishing, but you're also talking about film and the two are related, but they are distinct. And you mentioned sizzle reels. I doubt if uh, 20% of my listeners really know what that means. What is a sizzle reel, uh, Ginny? It's like a book trailer or a a script trailer. Uh, A a film trailer is when the film is produced and they have a two-minute little um, synopsis that people look at and that gets them to watch the film. Well, before that, uh, if you only have a script, you, you don't have actors acting it out. So it's basically taking photographs that re- reflect different plot elements, um, and then you put them together, and then people watch it, and you have music in the background, and uh, it, it's a way of just uh, qu- quickly um, qu- combining all the different elements of the film, the, the basic plot, characters, and you just sort of pitch it in about a two-minute pitch. And it's the same thing with a book trailer, where you would pitch your book in the same way, except you're going to be pitching it to editors and agents. Isn't that something? That's great. Now, I know a lot of people are interested in that. The business that I'm in relates to uh, publishing in a different sort of way. A lot of publishers come to me and offer guests to my show, People of Distinction. And a lot of the guests that come to People of Distinction are interested in what you're calling sizzle reel, some sort of video depiction of what they do. Now, in terms of that, if they come to you and they say, well, Ginny, help me out with the sizzle reel, do they have to have a lot of the material to offer, you know, the JPEGs, the pictorial? uh... No, no, basically, um, if they have photographs, that's fine. Uh, Otherwise, I can go to stock... uh, uh, Photo places, mm-hmm. and they basically have different photographs that I match. It starts with my writing a script, or they can write a script. It's about a 2,500 uh, character script, which turns out to be about a minute or two minutes uh, to record it. And so I use the script as a guideline. Uh, and then basically the script is, is drawn from if they have a synopsis of the book, or if they have the whole book, or they have a script. So we we write a, a, a little a, a, um, um, the, the script to, um, uh, a, a, to for the sizzle reel, and so then you know once the script is approved, then we have photographs, uh, images, and sometimes they can be video clips as well. Uh, sometimes the, the client can provide these if they have them. Some, sometimes people have done that if they've um, uh, taken pictures that relate to their film. Otherwise, I would just basically go on to these. I've, I belong to about six or seven different uh, stock photo houses. And so I go look for photographs that match the, the copy. And so then I put it all together. And I use, I use a program called Camtasia. But there are a lot of different editing programs that people use. And so I put the um, uh, a music track. We, we pick out some music. We pick out the um um, the photographs, and we put them in a line uh, based to, to relate to the script. And, you know, it could put it all together. And it's, um, you know, t- it takes, I don't know, a couple of hours to, to make these. Wow, Ginny, you really make it easy for people. And we love that on People of Distinction, making it easy for people to do sizzle reels, to get their, you know, whatever they want to get out there promotionally in video form. And you're hearing it on People of Distinction with Al Cole, Ginny Graham Scott, our special guest. And she's the CEO of Changemakers Publishing and Writing. Run to this website, learn more. Changemakerspublishingandwriting.com. All right, so let's follow that thread a little bit longer here, Jenny, uh, with uh, going into another aspect of what you do. With Once you do that sizzle reel for somebody, let's say that they say, oh, boy, you're doing a great job. I love this sizzle reel, but I don't know what to do now, Jenny. Do you have other okay. backup well, things that you can do to help them get it out there to, and I know you do, you have other ways to get it out to different people, businesses, and different people okay. maybe in the film world, in the publishing world, to make it click for them. Tell us a little bit about that, maybe the mailings that you okay, do. Okay, well, things. let me back up first before the sizzle reel is really combined with, if you have a book proposal or you have a sizzle, if you have a show Bible. So basically, 
you have a link when you do a query letter or you have a show Bible or a proposal to the sizzle reel. So the sizzle reel by itself, you wouldn't send that out. It would be basically supplemental to what else you're doing. So typically it would start with your initial connection would be you send out a query letter to say, well, are you interested? Or if somebody is going to a conference or a workshop or something where they meet somebody personally, uh, usually we would ask them, you know, can I send you some information? And so then it would start with following up or, or a cold uh, query letter to somebody saying, you know, would you be interested in this? And the, the query letter has a little summary of what you've either told somebody or what you are t- telling them for the first time. And it's, it's usually about 300 to 400 words. So it's, it's short. And you don't want to get into a lot of detail. It's just enough to get them to express interest. And then what usually they will do then, depending upon whether it's a um, a novel or, or a nonfiction book or a script, you know, then they will ask for certain kinds of material. If it's a, um, a novel, what they will typically want at that point is a synopsis and then um, possibly for um, a few chapters of it or the complete book. That's the point at which you would say, oh, and here's a sizzle reel that will highlight what this is all about. Uh-huh. All right, so then, then if it's nonfiction, you want a book proposal. And then the book proposal has like an overview of the book, chapter by chapter, what else is there out in the market. And so you, you do this whole, it's about a 15-page a uh, introduction to the book. And then you have a couple of chapters in in it for the proposal. And then you would also say, and here's a sizzle reel that will show you the highlights of the proposal. So it's a way of kind of supplementing it. And then if it's a script, what you would typically have is a synopsis of the script. And you would also uh, have um, uh, uh, basically about 20 pages of uh, of the script already done at least, or the complete script, and then you would send that. Or if it's a um, series, then you would use a show Bible, which is like a book proposal, but it uh, describes what the different scripts, uh, the different series or episodes are. It provides a synopsis of the the first episode, uh, maybe 20 pages, or the full script of the episode. And episodes will typically be shorter than standalone films. They're more like about... 30 minutes to about 60 minutes, sometimes 90 minutes, whereas a full script is about 90 uh, to 120 minutes. Hmm. Now we're getting it. I see. So in many cases, in most cases, maybe in all cases, the sizzle reel comes after a lot of you exactly, know, the mailings. Exactly. And, so it, yeah. it, it highlights it. Exactly. But sometimes, you know, well, people will put these sizzle reels out there. Somebody will discover the sizzle reel. Like sometimes people will use that as a, as they'll just send a press release, and the press release will have a copy of the sizzle reel, a, a link to that. Okay. Um, or sometimes people will just happen to be looking on YouTube, and it shows up, and they see the sizzle reel, and they want to know more. But 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 more typically, it's in the context of these other materials going first. There you go. Wow. All right, that's a barrel of information. We love that with publishing, writing, and uh, you know, getting it out there to a whole bunch of different companies that are going to be interested in the wares of different creative people. All right, you're running it down great. And uh, now, getting into another aspect of what you do with venture capital. Now, everybody wants capital in this world. It's tougher, uh, admittedly, during the coronavirus. And, uh, and, you know, during the 20th century, 21st century as well, uh, the economy is up and down and this and that. Uh, give our listeners a, an idea of how you link up individuals with venture capitalists, Jenny? Well, I started the uh, the DC Connection as an offshoot of Publishers Agents Films. Now, Publishers Agents Films has been in existence for 17 years, and I started it originally because I was trying to uh, contact Publishers Agents myself, and then I developed, before even before the Internet, I developed a, ways of contacting people, doing mailings to people, and then it went on to the Internet, and then it it just took off. 
And it was a, a, a point of time where I sold the company for a while, got it back uh, because it was just getting too big for me to handle. And so then I, you know, I got it, got it back. The name got changed from Publishers and Agents to Publishers Agents Films because about uh, ten years ago we added in film producers, so uh, people can connect with film producers. So then, as an offshoot of that, just very recently. We launched the um, vent- the venture capital connection or the BC Connection dot com, in which we connect writers or, or entrepreneurs and business owners to getting venture capital. Now, uh, for somebody who's written a script or done a film, it's much more competitive for getting venture capital. I mean, they tend to look for uh, 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 some some uh, new technology or some kind of business that's sort of new and and but developing and can be scalable, so it can really grow. So films are a little bit harder to do uh, for that. But if somebody has a great idea that this is a way of connecting to venture capitalists, and basically I get databases uh, from the, the Bay Area or, or internationally, and so we basically send out a query letter using the same model as with publishers, agents, and films, in which they briefly describe their project. And then what they would typically do is ask, well, I need more information. So at this point, the person would need a business plan or what they sometimes will do is they have these pitch decks where people are doing these pitches to venture capitalists where they have about a five or 10 minute presentation on a PowerPoint presentation. And but they normally you're not going to do this in in person anymore because of the uh, COVID virus. But um and uh, now we can you can do it by, by um over the internet where you show this video you can or you instead of a powerpoint presentation you turn it into a video and so it, these can be very dramatic and they can just take photographs and you know they become a way of very quickly introducing the person to what it is and you can also do with a little sizzle reel as well as this um pitch deck the pitch deck is a little bit longer and gets more serious and you get into the the financials and other kinds of things but it's the um, the pitch deck is, is taking the highlights of the business plan to to present it, and the little sizzle reel, which could be done for this, would take about two minutes of that and make it kind of kind of uh, you know snappy. Mm, yeah, we like that. Now, to be clear, to our listeners right now who are thinking venture capitalists, wow, they're the same as philanthropists. There is an essential difference. Uh, these venture capitalists are not philanthropists in the usual sense of the word where, you know, they're just trying to help people out. They're in it for a profit. They're looking at what's the return on investment, what's what's called ROI. And so they, I mean, they may not think that it's going to be profitable right away because there are a lot of investors who invest in these companies that have no money and they're not going to get money for for years. I mean, like Mm -hmm. Amazon started out that way. I mean, it was... It was initially unprofitable for a very long time, for five or six years. Yeah. And many of these other companies start up uh, with hopes, and the, they, they buy into it based on the business plan, which has these projections, these five- or six-year projections for where it's going to go. And, uh, you know, sometimes they go and sometimes they don't. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw in a monkey wrench here, Ginny, that I'm sure that you can deal with. Uh, some of my listeners, you know, who, are, who want to be very inventive, are saying, whoa, Ginny's giving us a whole bunch of information here. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to Google venture capital capitalists, and I'm going to come up with a list of my own. I'm going to bypass Ginny. Yeah. I'm going to just use well, that list, and I'm going to send things out now that I know how to do that. But it don't work that way. You add a certain professional dimension to all of this that everyday people can't just by, you know, if they just want to Google venture capitalists and send it out, they're probably going to fail. But with you, they have a greater success because of some of the things that you were talking about. You know well, how I to put these letters together. That, that we do. That... Yeah, keep going. I, well, the two things I think that we contribute is one is we have a professional approach. So a lot of times people put too much in their letters or they're not, they're not really market savvy. So they just they write a very dull letter or they get into things like, you know, I developed this and I had struggles and you know, you, they don't want to know about all that stuff. They don't want to know about your family, your kids. They basically want to get to the point. Mm-hmm. So I help them that way. The other thing is in terms of just looking for venture capitalists, I mean, it's very hard to find them. I mean, you have to, yes. and it would take them hours and hours 
to just look through the you know you put a Google search and look for venture capitalists you know to find the venture capitalists who, which is what we've done or we bu- we buy lists and so if they want to buy a database uh, there are some databases that they sell for a couple hundred dollars uh, there's one that's about six hundred dollars so they would have to buy their lists. Or it would take them an inordinate amount of time to just find this information if they're doing it manually. And then they have to send the letters out manually, whereas we use special software that personalizes the letter to the venture capitalist. And then it also personalizes the the email. So it goes out as if it goes from their email, and then the people respond directly to them. So, you know, anybody could, I guess, do this themselves, but it would take them a huge amount of time, and they might not really uh, have a good professional approach. That's right. Absolutely. And that's what I wanted to get to. People, I'm talking to you right now, my listening audience. Ginny knows the formula. See, any good professional, they know the formulas. They know how to do it. Tried and true. They've been doing it now for years. You can't just Google venture capitalists and think that you can do it all. That's why you got to go to this website, hire this lady for your professional endeavors, changemakerspublishingandwriting.com. Again, that's changemakerspublishingandwriting.com, and you are listening to People of Distinction with Al Cole. We have a few minutes left in the show. I want to take it out with a little bit of personal talk here, Ginny. Now, we started out with, uh, at least in my introduction, People of Distinction is a show for the engagement of human beings for positive ends, and particularly the things that we love in life that we want to impart on other human souls. And we also are open to let other people talk about their love areas that we can really profit from as well. A lot of my listeners now in the cap off, they're wondering, how has Ginny really elevated herself as a human being through her business, Changemakers Publishing and Writing, and all of the other great things that you're doing. How much of a positive impact has has that had on you as an individual? I'm not talking right now about the pocketbook, not talking about the billfold, not talking about how successful you've been, but how how, how much has it changed you and elevated you as a human being? to be the CEO of such an organization that has helped masses of people over the years, Jenny? Well, I think in a number of ways. I mean, I started writing uh, in my 20s. And basically, I started writing about whatever was I was experiencing at that time. And I, if something negative happened, I would turn it into a positive by writing about it. Like one of the earlier books that I did was called um, "The Truth About Lying." And what the, what inspired that is I had a couple of people who lied to me, and so um, I turned that into a book about lying and how people lie. And I ended up being on Oprah's show as a result of that. Uh, the book came out. Uh, this is oh, you know back in the, the, the 60s, uh, or, or eight, no, it was 87, 80, uh, the 80s. Um, and so, anyways, the book came out, and then um, uh, by the time the book was no longer on the market, uh, the film Liar Liar came out. So Oprah called me, uh, or one of her producers called me to be on the show to talk about the book. And you know, even though the book wasn't out there, it was just a great experience being on the show and they had people who uh, acted like they were um, um, or, or she found people from the audience who represented the different kinds of liars that I talk about in the book and so they would come up there and they talk about their experiences and so it, it's it's sort of funny because it's like a seven minute little segment and then they fly you in there and they fly you back and so it's it's like a was it on a two or three day production of course now you know you do on zoom calls or it would be really easy but back in that day it wasn't so so anyway, I, I started writing about all sorts of different things. I have books about business. How do you become successful in this? When I started working in the um, doing films, I started writing about uh, how do you um, do a independent short film. And then I started writing about how do you distribute your films because I got into the film industry. And uh, that also happened as a result of my meeting somebody, having a bad experience with this person who was sort of a con artist. And so then as a result of her meeting her, I met the people I work with now. And for the last um, six years, we worked together and done 10 films. So, I mean, I could have easily put that experience away, but instead, you know, I took advantage of the connections I met with an actor who referred me to a director, producer, 
producer, and then that led to a bunch of different films and books, and I don't know, one thing leads to another. And then I've also, using using the pandemic, I've done a whole series of songs. I, I would, uh, back in the um, uh, the 70s and 80s, I started writing some songs, and uh, I was in some song groups. And then I put that away for a while. I went back to Nashville and met some people there. But it's it's not a very, you know, unless you're a singer, songwriter, it's, it's really hard to do a career in that. But then I can't, then... Um, Recently, in the, I started. Um, there was somebody who started a little meetup group about uh, presenting yourself. So I started writing some songs, presenting the songs, and then I, uh, I joined this song uh, a live group, and, so, and I put out an announcement about who I was and I was lyricist looking for somebody to collaborate with. And I met a collaborator, and so now we have 30 songs that we've done together, and a lot of these are popular, uh, positive songs. Like I have one about the uh, COVID-19 um, blues. Um, another one is uh, I've done some gospel songs. This one is The Road to Redemption. And both of those have been now picked up as potential contenders for films. So, you know, each thing leads to another uh, possibility. And so that's what I'm always looking for is how I can use what experiences I have now to become positive or to help other people and to, you know, use my experiences as a guidepost for others. Look at that. Are you getting it, people? Again, I'm talking to you, my listening audience, on People of Distinction. Ginny Graham Scott is a lady who's been there, done that, and still doing it for your benefit. And Changemakers Publishing and Writing is much more, as you've been hearing, than just publishing and writing. It involves film. It involves venture capitalists. It involves a whole bunch of things that involve you. And Ginny has a heart and soul. You've heard her. She's also now a songwriter. And about 30 songs that she and her collaborator put together. And uh, you could be hearing about it very, very soon. So get involved in this fascinating world of Ginny Graham Scott and the best way, just start with her website. Go to GinnyGrahamScott.com, which is not one of the websites here, but Changemakers Publishing and Writing.com. Although, you're going to add to the list of other websites that you have that might include GinnyScott.com. Uh, <laughs> tell us about the other ways. Okay, that's that's an old site. So a couple of other ones, it was a Publishers Agents Films.com for connecting with uh, writers to publish as agents and the VC connection, uh, dot com for venture, uh, if you're seeking venture capital. Mm -hmm. There it is. Hey, boy, I'll tell you, I love these shows. People of distinction, especially when we have a guest like Jenny Graham Scott, who can help you with her change makers, publishing and writing. And, uh, you got to get in touch with her. Thank you so much, Jenny, for being my special guest here today on People of Distinction with Al Cole. And, uh, you know, we're going to work out things ourselves here with Al Cole Enterprises and, uh, and Changemakers as well for the benefit of our human family. So thank you so much, Jenny. It's been a real pleasure to have you on today. Thank you, Wes. It's been a pleasure here, too.